1960, and the bridge has Hi guys, I'm set. gonna share this with you guys. The city fully modernized. I hope you guys enjoy it. They shut it down for two years and rebuilt it. Unfortunately, at that time, they sealed the whole thing shut. It will never turn again. This is the last of three of these that exist in the city together at one point in time. It's okay. You want to? Sure. Awesome. Uh, is this considered brackish water? It is. Idle. The large brick building coming up to our left is known to most locals in Providence as the Dynamo House. That was originally a coal-fired power plant called the South Street Station, first brought online in 1918 by the Narragansett Electric Company. South Street was decommissioned and shut down in the mid-1990s, and then this building sat here empty for many years after that. There were lots of ideas of what they could use, use South Street for, but nothing worked out until about five years ago. It was announced that the University of Rhode Island and Rhode Island College would be merged into separate nursing school programs into one location. Here, they have since converted this into the Rhode Island Nursing Education Center, RINEC. It opened up for classes two years ago during the school year. There's about 700 students in there. Got a question, sir? What's the tidal range? Between three and a half and seven feet. Today's about a four and a half foot tide. Hi, Christy. <laughs> Isn't this beautiful, you guys? Oh, it is. <laughs> you said that was a nursing home back, a nursing, nursing school? And there's only 700, about well, 700 students? I don't know the exact number. You know the name of it? Did you say the name of it? I didn't hear the name. Here in front of us, we have the new Providence River Pedestrian and Bicycle Bridge. This was just opened and dedicated in August this past summer. It was built here by the state to connect the southern ends of the river walk in this location. And they built this bridge on the granite footings in the river, which were already here. The footings are all that's left of the original Interstate 195 Providence River Bridge. Oh, the original I-195 highway used to cut right in the middle of downtown Providence, crossing the river here before heading east towards ah! southern Massachusetts and Cape Cod. It was built in the 1950s under Eisenhower. The bridge that was here, though, was in very poor condition. It could no longer be repaired. It had to be replaced. Rather than do that here in the middle of downtown Providence again, they built a new bridge and highway over the harbor to our south, and then they tore this all down nine years ago. Tearing down the bridge and highway to Providence freed up more than 40 <laughs> acres of real estate for development opportunities. walking and I saw these people in this boat and I was like oh my god I have to do this and here I am but I thought this bridge was like super beautiful if you guys can see it way over there at the end oh hold on Ray over there you see the bridge that's where I started crossing that's where I got off on the bus Everybody say hi to Chuck. That's not Chuck. <laughs> Chuck is at home. Being well taken care of, if I might add. So this is Rhode Island. I'm in Providence right now. And I wasn't going to do this, but I have to. Because i got to show you guys how beautiful it is. When I get back, I'm going to sit. I have a... A gentleman that needs some help, and I'm going to teach you guys the, um, the 
division again because I walked into a law office and I asked for a tablet, like a notepad because I didn't bring a notepad. And I did timesheets for July and August. What's the building August. Is, uh, Silver Ship Center? Well, the packet building. It's mostly lawyers and accountants. Oh, lawyers. Yeah, you find, find those at the bottom of the ocean. Yeah. <laughs> so when I get back, I just had an amazing, um, I think she said it was Fiji. Vodka. The next small bridge across the river in front of us Drink. is called Crawford Street Bridge. And this is the second structure to bear that name to exist over the river here in Providence. The original Crawford Street Bridge was completed by the city in the mid 1920s and at one time was described as the widest bridge in the world. It was wow. only as long from bank to bank as the structure you see here. But it was a little more than a quarter mile wide. At that time, the city had decided that the rivers which run through downtown Providence were an eyesore that is decked the entire thing over with bridge work right through the middle of the city, completely covering it up. And it sat that way until 1988. In 88, they began to tear that up to build the river walk and park that you see here now. These new bridges and walkways were all opened and dedicated in 1993 and 1994. So prior to 88, from here north, you could not see water at street level. This look was the, entirely look at the covered. Of the bridge. Serious, we see the bottom of the bridge. What's that? What? That's wood. Look how pretty, 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 pretty. Uh, bonfire? Bonfire under the bridge? We're gonna talk about that in a minute. Uh, <laughs> oh my God, that's a lot of wood uh, underneath yeah. the bridge. God. And this is why I took this boat ride. See, that's the so come off under Crawford Street, we're now in the heart of the Providence River Walk, or Providence River Park, which is the actual name of all this. A lot of folks locally mistakenly call the entire park Water Place Park. You'll hear that name a lot in Providence, but Water Place Park is just the northern end, the round basin area that we'll turn around in in a few minutes. And the southern end over here to our right is called Memorial Park. It is so named for the large war memorial in the middle, the granite column that stands here and dominates the space to our right. That was first put up in the city in 1929 on top of the old Crawford Street Bridge. They built that in the middle of a traffic rotary on top of the bridge work over the river in the middle of downtown Providence. When they tore all the bridge work up in 88, they dismantled the monument first they put it into storage for a number of years and reassembled it here in 1995, dedicating this area as Memorial Park. They have since added a World War II memorial to the southern end of this parcel. And there's a small Korean War memorial to the northern side by the flags on our left. The large building behind it all, the brick structure with the clock tower and the weather vane, is the State of Rhode Island Supreme and Superior Court Complex that was built along the hillside between 1926 and 1930. Let's back over there, that brown building. North of Memorial Park, all the buildings to our right for the next quarter mile or so are all part of the Rhode Island School of Design, also known as RISD. It's one of the top fine arts and design schools in the US, if not the world. And it's based here along the waterfront in downtown Providence. This is also where you begin to see the black metal baskets in the middle of the river. They're called braziers. And there are 82 of them in the river, 12 right which are fixed in place another 70 you'll see floating in the water as we continue north they are here for the event called water fire water fire is an installation of artwork put on here in providence by an artist named barnaby evans they fill the braziers with firewood and then they light them all on fire oh. they've been doing that here in this large format since 1997 the next and final water fire this season is on saturday november 2nd and you can see the firewood under the bridges as we travel up and down the river they do not burn the bridges. They pull the firewood out of here, they burn the braziers. They store it here to keep it dry and accessible to their boats during the event. Yep, there's more wood. God, this is amazing. Super amazing. I just wanted to share with you guys the $22 is going to go far, huh? The whole world can see it now. 
the uh, Rhode Island Hospital Trust Company. Got it. Yep. That's a hospital? Former bank building. Hospital uh, Trust is a bank. It's now a dormitory for Oh. Oh. Now it's dormitories for what? Dormitory for our money. Oh, okay. Oh. Wow. Dormitory for our money. Yeah. Look how beautiful. Say hi, boy. Look at that cross way up there at church. Sorry, I gotta hold this damn thing up. Like super beautiful. Providence Road Island. Look at how the sun gleams off of that building. Oh, there's the little thingies he was talking about on the water. The I next section of the by. river in front of us is called the Confluence. This is the confluence of three rivers here in downtown Providence. The river that we've been on so far, the Providence River, starts right here. This is the headwaters of the Providence River. It flows from this point south to Narragansett Bay behind us, about seven miles total. It's formed here by two separate rivers that flow down from the north and merge at this point. The river on the right is called Mashashik which in the Narragansett language means where the moose water. And the river to the left is called Wanasquatucket, and that's usually translated as where the tide ends. And those are the names of both of the rivers here already. When Roger Williams came here and founded Providence in 1636, the native Narragansett people who lived here called them by those names already. They called the Providence River the Great Salt River. I can't pronounce it in Narragansett, though. It's like 38 letters long. They named it the Providence River in honor of their settlement here. Roger Williams spoke of oh, finding this building. place, he said, through divine providence. He was a Puritan minister who tried to settle in Massachusetts originally. But he had a falling out with the other Puritans, and eventually he was forced to flee. He traveled south here to start his own settlement, Providence Plantations. He described Providence as a shelter... Yeah, for persons distressed of conscience. Yeah, they will both. Oh, I want to get on one of those. Water place. Is that a Mexican flag I see over there? <laughs> You gotta speak up, Miss. I can't hear you. When the fires are lit, are they then all the way along? The That's correct. On the full events, they light the entire stretch, yes. Those things right there, right? That's correct. Oh. That'd be a romantic boat ride to Battle Malone. Okay. These boats are nice. Love birds. <laughs> I thought that was a Mexican flag. All these buildings. Kind of like downtown LA, you guys. Yeah, no. These are the things they turn on fire. Put the wood in there and then they turn them on. And it's all around, all along the... Um, all along the river. And they got a lot of them. He said 72, I think. This is cool. That's nice. We can walk along the side of the, the river. Okay. Reminds me of Volcano, that one that never got done and had to be torn down to do, do tour the, um, the lava. Oh, that sun is strong. Sorry, guys, let's not look into the sun. Jackets. 
See, you see that little thing right there? They put the wood on that. There's another one over here. Put the wood on that, and then they light it up at night. The large round ocean lake area we're entering next is Water Place Park itself. This is the northern end of the river walk and the focal point of the downtown park system here in the city. When they built and designed this space, they made it round here like this for a very specific reason. They're actually paying homage here to the original Salt Cove, which was the centerpiece of downtown Providence for many years. When the colonists first came to settle here in the 1630s, they lived on the hills to our east, what we now call College Hill here in Providence, more specifically the area known as Benefit Street. The first homes were built along the hillside where Benefit runs, and they faced west towards the rivers. In this area where downtown Providence is all around us, this was a great big salt marsh, a big tidal estuary. The two rivers flow down from the north, the tide flowed in and out from the south. Basically, you can imagine about 70 or 80 acres of swamp land here. Wow. Over the years, as they built the city, they started filling in that swampy marsh area until 200 years later, by the early 1800s, all that was left was a large round basin, very similar to this one, except it was five or six times bigger. And the city referred to that as the Cove. The Cove was surrounded by a big public park and walkway, just like this one is, and that was called the Promenade. The Cove and the Promenade were the centerpiece of downtown Providence. They built the original train station here along the banks of the Cove. They built the Rhode Island State House on Smith Hill to overlook the Cove. This area was the focal point of the city. By about 1880, the rivers here in Providence had become horribly polluted through industrialization and urbanization of the surrounding area. And the city decided, we don't want the Cove in the middle of downtown Providence any longer. It was probably pretty disgusting to look at and smell every day by that point. So they decided they would fill the entire thing in. There used to be another large hill in the city called Waybosset Hill, right in the middle of downtown Providence, where Waybosset Street exists today. They cut down Waybosset Hill, they took all that dirt, and they dumped it into the cove, and they filled it in. That process took almost 10 years. When they were done, all that was left here was a narrow spillway for the river to flow through. And then in 1890, they began decking over this whole area with bridge work. And then they ran a railroad yard through here. And that's how it sat for almost 100 years until 1988. The main rail lines for the city ran directly through this space with the river underneath it the entire time. That was the beginning of that widest bridge in the world that I mentioned earlier, Crawford Street. They started here in the 1890s and just worked their way south every once in a while until they finished where the current Crawford Street Bridge is in the mid-1920s. You can see the Rhode Island State House off to our left. The white dome structure at the top of the hill to our left is the Capitol building. One of the small ironies of its location up there is they intended to have it overlook the cove as it gazed upon Providence. But by the time they finished building it in 1904, the cove had been filled in and it was overlooking a rail yard. Wow. <laughs> the golden fellow on top is called the Independent Man, and he's our symbol of independence in Rhode Island. Rhode Island was the first colony to declare independence from England two months before the other 12 on May 4th. 1776. We were the last ones to sign the Constitution and become a state two years after the other 12 had already signed. And that building is made of white Georgian marble, the entire structure, even the dome, that is the fourth largest self-supporting masonry structure in the world. Wow. Enjoy while you can. <laughs> we had a little couple over there. Oh, look, my ray of sunshine behind me. We had a little couple over there. They were snuggling. Yep. Enjoy while you can.
wanted to share this with you guys. Oh, yeah. I'm terrible. Because I want you guys. Oh my god, you guys got to see this. Hold on, let me turn it around. Because it looks really nice from here. See that? Up there. I don't know what it is, but I'm pretty sure we're going to talk about it. Look at how pretty that is. I think that's where I have to catch the bus. That is where I have to catch the bus. What's that building there? Can everyone see the two white steeples in front of us? The more modern structure to the right, the brick building with the white steeple on the golden top, is the former Providence Washington Insurance Company. It's owned by the Rhode Island School of Design now. They have classrooms in there. The white church steeple to the left of it, though, is the steeple of the First Baptist Church on North Main Street. When they refer to that as First Baptist here, they do not mean the First Baptist Church of Providence, although technically it is. That is the First Baptist Church in the New World, a congregation formed here by Roger Williams himself in 1638, after he left the Puritans behind. That current structure, though, only dates to 1775. That is the third meeting house of the First Baptist Church. When they built that in 1775, the revolution had basically already started. The British were already blockading both Newport Harbor and Boston Harbor. They say all the out-of-work ships, carpenters in southern New England came here to build that. It was the only large construction job going on for them. how pretty that is. Let me zoom out. Say cheese. <laughs> That's where I have to take the bus. <laughs> so I wanted to share this with you guys because it's coming back into the confluence, the river's all me. Really pretty here. There's one more thing here to talk about before we continue on. If you look to the right hand yeah, side of the, the wall, right. you'll see a list of brass dates with some lines underneath them. The top one is 1938, the second one 1954, the third one 1815. The lines represent the hurricane tide levels here in downtown Providence in those years. In 1938 and 1954, two major hurricanes struck Rhode Island. Right in 38, there was no National Weather Service to speak of. There was no weather radar. There was no Al Roker in the morning. <laughs> they had very little warning here that storm was coming. A town in Long Island, New York called the state four hours before that storm arrived. So four hours notice for a Category 3 hurricane, 120 mile an hour winds. Wow. The eye of the storm hit Southern Rhode Island directly, and the storm surge, all the seawater, well, that came straight up near Gansett Bay and into the city. And it struck at 38 at high tide. Uh -oh. Now we're past today's high tide. The water level is dropping. It was high at 2 o'clock. The ST line at the bottom there is the average high tide height, spring tide. Sometimes the water level springs up above that line, sometimes below it. Today's high tide was about half a foot lower than that line, so not even an average high tide. Well, a month ago was the anniversary of the hurricane of 38, September 21st and 22nd. Tides that day are average, about even with that line. On top of that naturally high water level, the storm pushed an additional 17 and a half feet of seawater into downtown Providence, flooding the entire area around us and causing massive damage to the city and unfortunately, killing more than 400 people locally. It was a major catastrophe at the time. They didn't name hurricanes in the 30s, but they refer to that storm as the Long Island Express. The second line, 1954, that's Hurricane Carol. That they had established the National Weather Service during World War II, so by the 50s they were tracking and naming hurricanes. They had a better idea Carol was on her way. They couldn't stop it, though, any more than we can stop one today. So they evacuated. They told people to leave the city and other low-lying areas near the water. Carol also struck at high tide in August of 54 and pushed 16 feet of seawater in here, again flooding all of downtown and causing massive damage, although only one death in the city in 54. It was after those back-to-back -back events in the modern era that they decided to design and build the hurricane barrier, the large structure by the marina, which I'll talk about as we head into that harbor. The third line, 1815, that's called the Great New England Gale of 1815. It's a massive storm written about all over southern New England. It's estimated the Great Gale killed between three and 6,000 New Englanders in its day. It was probably a hurricane. It happened in October that year, which we know now is part of hurricane season. If you read about the gale, it sounds a lot like a hurricane. Tidal surge, heavy winds, heavy rains, flooding. However, in 1815, they had no idea what a hurricane was. It was simply a massive storm to those poor people, what they called a gale. Here in downtown Providence in 1815, all the buildings downtown at that point in time were simple colonial built structures made out of bricks and wood and stone. And the great gale flattened downtown Providence. 
And they had to rebuild the city after that. place that they make a uh, place where they make only there is one building food. along the river in downtown which survived the great gale of 1815 it still exists here from food. before then it's the only structure of that age at this level there's lots of older buildings in the hills but not downtown it's the three-story brick building to our left with the white colonial trim and the clock in its peak that building is called market square that was built by the city in 1773 as a center for business and trade very similar in form and function to Boston's Faneuil Hall Market Building. In fact, it looks like a miniature version of Faneuil Hall. That building survived the gale because of those first floor windows, the arched openings at ground level. In 1815, there were no windows in the arches, just uh. openings into the market area under the building. It survived, much like one of those modern beach houses up on stilts, the water could flow through and back out and not actually knock it over. Well, certainly at that point in time, an accidental feature, but a very lucky one. That's all by the Rhode Island School design now. They bought it from the city in 1950, but the building is on the National Register of Historic Places. Oops, I almost dropped you guys. <sighs> oh, somebody did some tagging. Somebody lives there, apparently. I like these old buildings. Look at that one over there. Uh, yes, it's a public waterway. They close it for safety purposes during water fire, but otherwise oh. it's public. Can't see it. Do they have boat rides during water? We do. What's that building over there on your it's right? An office building called the Owens Building. Oh. Hold on. Let's get underneath this bridge. There it is. That's pretty. Oh, my sunshine again. There's my sunshine. Hi, Mindy. <laughs> this is just the Providence. Folks, you go back here towards me, please, for a moment. You all see the small gray building with the domed roof behind me, about three stories tall, yep. kind of tucked in the city there. That's called the Customs House. That's the original U.S. Customs Building for the Port of Providence. They built that over there in 1855. In 1855, the Port of Providence was all down here. This is all wharfs and warehouses. There would have been tall ships lined up here right along the riverbank unloading cargo into Providence. The little glassed-in space on top of the dome was a room, a space, so they could station a customs agent, and they would look out into the bay to see if ships were sailing in. No phones or radios back then. When they arrived, they would come down to the docks and they would tax them, tariffs. But try to imagine the skyline of the city behind me when they built the Customs House, that was the tallest structure downtown. Oh, wow. Towering lookout point from which you could see for miles out into the bay. You can't even see the modern harbor in front of us from the top of the old Customs House any longer. It's been swallowed up in the city around it. That was replaced in 1898 by the current federal courthouse for an island, which is along Kennedy Plaza downtown. The mural is a relatively recent addition that was done about a year ago by a local arts group called the Avenue Concept, and that is a Narragansett woman, a local Native American from this area. What is that building right there? That's a former Old Stone Bank building. Now it's just offices. Cubicles. So it's not much, but it's cool. All kinds of new stuff, you know? 
I just wanted to share with you guys. I gotta go back and find out what that drink was because it was pretty tasty. And I could smoke in there too. It's like a cigar bar or something. Then I'll walk to the bus stop. Catch the bus and go get some rest. <laughs> so let's finish this tour. It's beautiful, you guys. Let me turn this around. Just look at look how pretty that is. Like super awesome. And my sunshine. My sunshine's all, all the way up there. I love my sunshine. Thank you, Mindy. I'll always love my sunshine. Oh, okay, you see that over there, you guys? Uh, let's see plant there it is plant city blah blah that's where I had lunch free because that guy had an attitude I was like don't throw food away it was pretty good <laughs> he had a really bad attitude I want to get on one of those reminds me of what is it Italy I wonder if I could smoke on that. Italy? I think How deep is the water right around here? Maybe three feet right now. Look how beautiful this is. That's like it? Pushing. Very shallow, yeah. It's about three feet deep. Well, it's a big swimming pool. It starts to get much deeper after Point Street and then very deep in the harbor. But uh -huh. up in the basin where we turned around at low tide, it's dry in spots. Really? Yeah. Uh, what are those big tubes at the... We're going to talk about that a little bit later. Oh. This is beautiful. i got to do this at home. Take the Queen Mary tour. I think I did once, but I wasn't able... Yeah, I did, actually. I wasn't able to record it. These are what leftovers of the bridge. Well, Former pier for the bridge that was to protect it when it was open from getting hit by a ship. Oh. Well, that's where we're going to be going back to the Whiskey Republic. They weren't open, so I couldn't sit there. But the building behind it is law offices. They're the ones that gave me the tablet. So I could do some of this work that I had to do. There's more. I don't know what that is. Oh, the freeway. The large dam-like structure across the river in front of us is the Fox Point Hurricane Barrier. That is what the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers came up with as a solution to the hurricane flooding of 1938 and 1954 to protect downtown Providence from future tide surge. They started building this project in 1960. They finished in 1966. The cost at that time was $16 million. 
I cannot imagine what that would cost in today's money, somewhere between 150 and 200 million easily. Although very large and impressive across the river in front of us, it actually stretches 3,000 feet in total. It starts to our west at high ground near the Allens Avenue entrance to the port, comes east over the land to the river, through the river in front of us, then east again to our left across Fox Point and India Point, roughly in parallel with the new highway up there. And there are gates in the structure, the three gates in the river, which are obvious, but also gates on land over all the streets and openings. And all of those get closed in the event of an approaching storm. And then the entire structure, all 3,000 feet, acts like a dam or a levee to stop that surge of water from coming in here as the hurricane approaches. Um. It rains a lot during hurricanes, though. If you've been caught in one before, I bet you noticed that. And all the rainwater that lands on the city and north of the city mainly drains into the rivers. And the rivers can't be shut off. They just keep flowing down here. So if you turn the structure in front of us to a dam to stop the surge of water coming in, you've trapped the rivers from leaving. And that water would eventually just back up and flood Providence anyway. So what do you do? Well, the Army Corps is pretty sharp. They knew that was part of the challenge. So a major component in the barrier is this brick building here on the western end. That's a pumping station. There are five pumps inside there that they turn on once the gates are closed. And then they pump the river over the barrier and into the harbor faster than it flows naturally. Each pump can move more than 630,000 gallons of water a minute. That's more than 3 million a minute when all five are running together. When they were built in the 60s, they were the largest pumps ever constructed at that point in time. And they're quite effective. They've used this for a number of storms over the years, most recently during Superstorm Sandy. When Sandy in the Northeast U.S. seven years ago, a lot of it came here as well. They shut all the gates to the barrier, they turned the pumps on, the water in here where we are now, never even got to the high tide mark. This is the safest place to have your boat in Rhode Island. We left ours in the marina during Sandy. The Army Corps comes in here to test the facility much more often than that, though. They're concerned, due to the age and design of the structure, that if they don't keep these doors in the river moving all the time, they will seize in place and get stuck. Right. So about once a month, they come down here and they exercise the gates. They lower them all the way down, they crank them all the way back up. It takes 30 minutes to lower the doors into position fully, mainly through gravity, that has slowly eased them down. It takes two hours to crank them back up. Each door weighs 112,000 pounds. That's the door. And they most recently did that about two weeks ago. Now how deep is the water right now here? Uh, we've got about 25. It is a sill under the doors. It's only about 12 feet deep. Oh, okay. Wow. That's a big door. Just beyond the barrier is the new Interstate 195 and Providence River Bridge. This is the bridge and highway that they built to replace the old one downtown. It's been in service above us here about 12 years. This main span, the green roadway and archway we're passing underneath, was built and assembled as one piece off-site. They built this bridge 15 miles south of here in North Kingstown, Rhode Island, at a retired naval base called Quonset Point done building it, they rolled it off the piers of the base onto two big barges. And they towed it up Narragansett Bay here to coincide with high tide. Positioned the ends of the bridge over the columns already built here. And then they just held it in place while the tide went out, dropping the whole structure into position and towing the barges away. Wow. It saved the Cardi Corporation more than two years of working over the water in the old traditional manner. There's a show that used to air on the Discovery Channel called Mega Moves. I did an episode on moving this bridge. It was pretty impressive at the time. One morning, no bridge. Next morning, bridge. bridge. <laughs> That's the 195 freeway over there. God, that looks so beautiful. And sunshine. large industrial area out here in front of us and all around us is the modern port of providence this is still technically the providence river the providence river doesn't officially end for almost six more miles if you travel south of here by water eventually you come to a large 
white lighthouse in the middle of Narragansett Bay called Connecticut Light between Warwick and Barrington, Rhode Island. And that's technically the mouth of the Providence River, although for most folks, the harbor here would be the top of Narragansett Bay. It's a very active port, second busiest in New England after Boston. We import several things, starting with cement. There are three companies that bring dry cement here by ship. Those gray domes to our south, dry cement silos. Home heating oil, Providence is the number one source for home heating oil in New England. There are four fuel oil terminals in the port. It's even a pipeline from here that goes all the way to Springfield, Mass. Filtering fuel to western and northern New England. It's part of that business, diesel fuels, kerosene, aviation gasolines, automobile, automobile gasolines, asphalt. Road salt, we salt the streets in the winter in New England. A lot of salt comes into Providence. You can see a pile of it to our west in the spray terminal. And at Quads at the old Navy base, in North Kingstown, they bring in Volkswagens, Audis, Porsches, and I believe Subarus as well now. There's a massive car import facility at the old Navy terminal. We have one major export in Providence, and that is scrap steel. There are two companies which bring scrap here to the port and then ship it overseas for recycling, mainly to China and Turkey. That's our only major export from here. That's on that red bulk freighter with the four cranes in front of us that just came in today. They're going to load that full of rusty metal and then ship it off to China three weeks at sea. The newest addition to the port are the three large power generating wind turbines to our south. Those were installed here about 10 years ago. They're located above the Fields Point Wastewater Treatment Facility. And they built those to help offset increasing electrical costs associated with sewage treatment here in Providence. I own a home in the city. I have not seen my sewer bills go down since they built those. <laughs> they, probably up, will. Uh, they have definitely gone up. Apparently not, on, not for power reasons, though. They say for another 10 years that they'll be able to generate enough offsetting power not to increase bills for power reasons. Uh, it's usually very windy here, much windier than today. No here. seals. Seals in the winter. In the winter? <laughs> we have seals. They're lazy. They sit. The big these. red boats over here to our right at Fox Point are tugboats owned by a company called McAllister Towing. McAllister is a large family run company based out of New York Harbor. McAllister family founded that company in 1864. They still own and operate it as the same family. They have tugboats like these up and down the East Coast from Portland, Maine to Puerto Rico. The McAllister tugs here in Providence are big enough to go anywhere, and sometimes they do. But they're mainly here to help larger vessels in and out of the port as they arrive and depart. Oh, well, the McAllister family also operates a Staten Island ferry for the city of New York. How big did you say that bridge is? Pardon? This, this bridge. What about it? How long did you say it was? Very long. It was from there to there. Very, very long. I know. So... Getting to the end. Right? So you don't know how long it is. Oh, what is this? Four, five. Seven hundred feet. Five more minutes and we're done, you guys. We're gonna talk about this one now. The large facility to the west with the three stacks 
This was called the Manchester Street Power Station. This was all originally a coal-fired power plant, similar to South Street where the nursing school is now. Except Manchester is older. This facility first went online in Providence in 1904. Its original purpose was to create and distribute direct current, DC power, primarily at that point in time for the city's electric streetcar system, which is long gone now. The building all the way to the right, the Steph roof accents, is original 04 structure. In 1906, the property was purchased by a company called Narragansett Electric and converted and upgraded to power Providence and the surrounding area by burning coal, which they did here continuously until 1990, when they began shutting it down. That middle 10 story structure dates to 1906. In 1992, Narragansett Electric decided to modernize Manchester. They added three natural gas turbines to the southern part of the property on our left. And they rebuilt the steam system and the Westinghouse turbines to the north. When they did all that work in the 90s, they spent a lot of money and time to make the new portions of the plant reflect the architecture of the old. So although that vintage, it is a modern power plant. They are burning natural gas right now. And the entire facility makes power for a little less than half a million homes. Wow. Unfortunately, Narragansett Electric no longer exists. That's owned by a company out of Virginia called Dominion Energy. And Dominion claims that Manchester Street is the most photographed power plant in the United States. It's quite handsome for an industrial power plant, especially at night when it's all lit up, very popular with artists and photographers. And you may have even seen it before yourself and not realized it. If you've ever seen the film, there's something about Mary by the Farrelly brothers. Yep. The first half of that movie was shot in Providence, and there are two scenes which take place on the deck of the hot club to our east with the power plant directly in the background. The turbines, we hear. We hear the turbines. I think you hear the pumps. I don't think you hear the turbines. They call that bar over there the Hot Club because that little brick building up front with the big pink neon sign on it, which was the original 15-seat bar in 1983, was actually built as the steam-generating power plant for the Providence Steam Engine Company. That large condominium complex was at one time a factory, and when it opened in 1845, everything inside ran on steam and in a boiler where the Hot Club is. When the owners bought the property in the early 1980s, they had to tear the remnants of the steam system out of there to build the bar. They called it the Hot Club because if you've been in there and they were making steam, it was hot. It would have been hot. <laughs> Everyone thinks it has some more nefarious purpose because of that pink neon sign that faces the highway, but that's it, I assure you. <laughs> and that, folks, brings us back to the Fox Point Marina and the end of our tour. I'm going to ask you all to please remain seated while I bring the boat in and tie it up. I'll let you know when it's safe to stand up. So, and thanks for coming down today. Have a wonderful evening. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Is this a private house? I am going yes. to go have a couple of more drinks. The and then... Some, some of these boats never move. Though. Probably got a couple of hours. Yeah. Around what time does it get dark here? Do you know? Uh, sunset is in about... I think 45 minutes. Really? Sunset. And then it gets dark? It'll be behind the building though shortly, so... In effect. My French inspector. Okay, I guess that means one drink. You guys enjoyed this i did god bless you guys I might do another little video right now because i already did the time sheets i might as well show you guys about 70 percent brew and that'll help god bless you guys i love my sunshine <laughs> talk to you guys soon bye turn it up